It's now time for member statements. I recognize the member for uh, Black River. Pardon, Humber River Black Creek, my apologies. Thank you, Speaker. There are more than 1.5 million Canadians who trace their origins to Italy, with most living here in Ontario. In fact, their contributions here and across the world stage are so numerous, we have dedicated June as Italian Heritage Month in Ontario. Speaker, the Italian Canadian community is known and respected for their values and traditions of hard work, ingenuity, and dedication to family life in their community. And of course, Italians have a deep and proud history to draw upon, filling the shelves of libraries around the world. Their ancestors had an empire that spanned Europe and beyond, and their legacy has had a profound impact on all of humanity. Countless great Italian figures have shaped Western philosophy, law, culture, faith, science, and so much more. To this very day, Italians continue to be a name on the world stage in science, engineering, sports, cuisine, fashion, and much more. Today in Ontario, there are almost one million Ontarians of Italian descent, Italian immigrants and their children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren who literally built so much of this province with their own hands, minds, and hearts. We all owe a debt of gratitude to Italian Ontarians, and it is a real honour to recognize their great culture and identity today with all of you. Happy Italian Heritage Month. For the member statements, I recognize the member for Aurora Newmarket. Thank you, Speaker. And last week, I had the privilege of joining several of my colleagues in representing our Ontario provincial government at the Ontario Quebec Parliamentary Association 28th General Assembly in Quebec. The theme of this year's meeting was artificial intelligence. Les objectifs de the objectives of the associations are uh, to uh, promote cooperation uh, between parliaments and to uh, promote the understanding and work uh, together within the two assemblies in the uh, um, law, in culture, in science and technology. And and also the, uh, being able to work together to improve cooperation for, between the peoples of Quebec and uh, Ontario. Citizen agreement moving my private member's motion of the use of AI in government forward. Additionally, this week we had the second reading of Bill 194, strengthening cybersecurity and building trust in the Public Sector Act 2020. 24. Artificial intelligence is already being used in many sectors. It was an interesting visit to the Musée des Beaux-Arts uh, du Québec uh, to see how AI has been incorporated into the art piece viewing experience. It was a wonderful experience in Quebec. Look forward to next year. Thank you. Further member statements. I recognize the member for Sir Patrick. Well, thank you, Speaker. June 7th will mark the end of an era in nursing. The Mack School of Nursing Alumni Association is closing with a 150-year history of advancing their profession in Niagara and beyond. Originally inspired by the techniques of Florence Nightingale, Mack nurses pioneered nursing standards that transcended the St. Catharines Bay School itself. During the school's operation from 1874 to 1974, the MAC name was well known. When the school itself closed, Canada's oldest alumni association decided to give back to their profession in a meaningful way. It partnershiped with Brock University and Niagara College. The nursing alumni started a scholarship fund to help inspiring nurses pay their tuitions. The money came from the alumni's own membership fee and donations that they collected personally. With the closure of the Alumni Association this year, Brock and Niagara College have agreed to enshrine the MAC name and offer their scholarship under the original title on the ongoing basis. As a former Niagara hospital worker, it fills my heart to see MAC nursing legacy carry on at a time when we nurses, when we need nurses more than ever. They have helped the next generation get their start. My sincere thanks to the Mac Alumni Association for 150 years of dedication to nursing, its 
is advocate. It is an advocate like you, advocates like you, who bring their, the term "healthcare heroes" to life. Right on. For the member stables, I recognize the member for Thunder Bay Atacokan. Thank you, Speaker. It's a privilege to rise today and recognize our government's recent investment of more than $2.7 million over three years to launch the Superior North Specialized Treatment and Alternative Responders Program in Thunder Bay. This innovative new mobile crisis response pilot program is a behavioral first health first response approach to specialized mental health and addictions care in our community, diverting visits to the emergency department and reducing unnecessary police involvement. With the three-year pilot funding model, our government has once again recognized the value of resilient funding structures. It has been an honour to work closely with Chief Shane Muir and Superintendent of Community Paramedicine Andrew Cugliati of Superior North EMS throughout the pro proposal process. Because of the work that the EMS leadership, their team and community partners have committed to day after day, Chief Shane and Superintendent Andrew were well positioned to submit a purposeful, credible proposal in a very short time frame. On behalf of our community, we'd like to thank Associate Minister Tobolo and his team and Minister Sylvia, Sylvia Jones for their invaluable support in making this crucial service a reality. Speaker, I take this opportunity to also recognize the tremendous work that has already been advanced locally and regionally through existing partnerships and networks that embrace a whole of community approach to our collective safety and well-being. We are working together for all our people. Thank you, Speaker. Member statements. I recognize the member for Hamilton West, Ancaster, Dundas. Thank you very much, Speaker. Uh, unfortunately, our Premier's obsession with booze continues. We now have the billion-dollar booze boondoggle. Uh, we learned that the Premier is using tax dollars up to a billion dollars uh, to break a contract early so that folks can get easy access uh, to beer at convenience stores. So while parents struggle to cover childcare costs and seniors search in vain for a family doctor, why does it make any sense for this government to hand out billions, hundreds of billions, to big uh, breweries and discounts to mega-rich uh, grocery store billionaires? They should be funding our public services instead. Lining the pockets of massive corporations should be at the very bottom of this government's priority list. How does getting access to easy beer help a parent who can't afford daycare for their kid? What's the point of grabbing a six-pack easily if you're stuck waiting for years to get a family doctor? A government is supposed to focus on ensuring quality public education, childcare, health care, and ensuring citizens live with dignity. Why is this Premier prioritizing beer sales over any of our other crises? The health care crisis, the housing crisis, affordability crisis. People can't afford baby formula in this province. So really, Ontario deserves better than politicians who throw away our tax dollars on, on handouts to megacorps uh, when families' basic needs remain unmet. It's long past time that this government got their priorities straight, and I say no more corporate giveaways until the basic needs of all Ontarians are met. Here, here. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Mississauga Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Recently, I was proud to announce that five organizations in Mississauga Lakeshore have received $310,000 in funding for their Experience Ontario program. That includes $55,000 for Monstrosity for the Bo Bollywood Monster Mashup in July, the largest South Asian festival in Canada, and another $55,000 for Canadian Community Art Initiative for their 19th annual Mosaic Festival in August, the largest South Asian art festival in North America. It includes $125,000 for the XL Lifestyle for the Taco Fest in August, the best Mexican festival in the GTA, and $55,000 for Creative Hub 1352, formerly known as the Small Arms Society for the Mississauga Festival of Trees, an annual winter art cultural festival in the Small Arms in, uh, Inspection Building in December. And lastly, $20,000 for Mississauga Etel Fest. I also want to invite all members to join us at my own annual Italian Heritage Month event at the Small Arms Inspection Building on June 13 at 6 p.m. Speaker, I want to thank the Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sport 
for these grants. And I want to thank these organizations for all the important work they're doing to enrich the lives of the people of Mississauga and to build a stronger community and a better Ontario. On behalf of all the members, we appreciate everything you do. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Eglinton Lawrence. Thank you, Speaker. Last Thursday, I was delighted to host my sixth annual Eglinton Lawrence Volunteer Service Awards, my favourite event each year. These awards give us all an opportunity to recognize community heroes and allows all the attendees, along with friends and families, to reflect on the profound impact of their dedicated service to others. This year, 110 people from 20 organizations received an award in recognition of their exemplary volunteer service. These organizations include places of worship, hospitals, not-for-profits, Toronto Police Service, and others. Each award recipient is recognized for their individual contribution, but also for their work with the organization, emphasizing the notion that while volunteering starts at the individual level, we'll accomplish more by working together. And the recipient's contributions um, are truly inspiring. For example, those serving the Italian community in my area through Columbus Centre Villa Charities received awards this year. One recipient from Baycrest Senior Support uh, Program, Susan Trichel, has volunteered as a friendly caller and listened to the calls of the seniors with empathy and compassion for as long as they needed for over 25 years. Also, uh, a volunteer, Clayton uh, Ashton, with the church, the Ashbury and West United Church, was recognized for all of his work with property maintenance over several years. These are an inspiring award. It's always better to recognize people for giving than for what they get. And I really uh, want to congratulate all the Edlington Lawrence 2024 recipients for this year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Don Valley West. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today with a heavy heart to pay tribute to a remarkable woman, an amazing public servant, and a longtime neighbour and friend, Councillor Jay Robinson, who represented Ward 15, Don Valley West, at Toronto City Council for almost 14 years. Jay exemplified spirited leadership and served with distinction in roles such as chair of the Toronto Transit Commission. Prior to being elected, she served as Director of Events at the City of Toronto, where her spirit for fun and community service shone through as she led efforts to create beloved traditions like Nuit Blanche and Summerlicious. Jay's resilience and, community and commitment to public service were truly inspirational, especially as she courageously battled breast cancer during recent years, while continuing to serve our community with the utmost dedication. When she could not be physically present at events, she made sure her presence and support were there virtually or through her amazing staff. She was a great municipal partner to me since I was elected as MPP, and while she was nonpartisan, she gave me good advice when I sought her counsel before deciding to run. We remember Jay for her profound dedication to public service, her ability to inspire those around her, and her fierce and fun spirit. As we honour her legacy, we extend our deepest sympathies to her family, her beloved husband Billy, her sons Jake, Sam and Will, mother Shirley, siblings Elizabeth, Brandy, Robin, Kelly and John, and daughter-in-law Brooke, her colleagues, friends, church family and all who will miss her. Jay's legacy is a lifetime of public service, ongoing, enriching and fun events for the City of Toronto and community dedication that will continue to inspire all who were privileged to know her. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Leeds Grenville, Thousand Islands, and Rideau Lakes. Uh, thanks, uh, Speaker. Uh, today, I want to recognize eight uh, food bank superheroes from South Crosby Public School in my riding of Leeds Grenville, Thousand Islands, and Rideau Lakes. These students in Power Up 2, led by their teacher, Mrs. Leanne Huckman, have spent the last year growing and donating produce to two local food banks. 
In late October of 2023, these eight students in grades three and five started growing lettuce, and they decided to, they wanted to donate to the Elgin Food Bank. In the new year, the Power Up Two students decided to host staff hot lunches prepared by the students themselves, and also they sold ice cream sandwiches to their peers. All the proceeds went directly to the Elgin Food Bank. The students have been even making monthly donations of fresh, le fresh lettuce grown in their own zip grow to the Portland Food Bank, including in with each donation an instruction manual on how to grow these plants so that food bank users can grow their own tomatoes, cucumbers, peppers, and lettuce over the summer months. Speaker, since last January, these eight students have raised a total of $1,012 that have been donated to both the Elgin and the Portland Food Banks. Speaker, I want to do a special thank you to Mrs. Huffman and her students, Seamus Dance, Paisley Wood, Jacob George, Jacob Gordon, Joseph Riley, Jackie Reitmeyer, Oliver Worrell, and Jonathan Worrell. Colleagues, please join me in congratulating these eight food bank superheroes. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Nepean. Thank you very much, Speaker. I think everyone in here can agree there should be zero tolerance of children being bullied in the classroom, on their school bus, or anywhere in the province of Ontario. And I've had the opportunity to stand both in opposition and here in government to make my mark as best I could to support children who may be vulnerable to such attacks, whether it was anti-Indigenous, anti-Black racism, for children with special needs, the LGBTQ plus population, Muslim students, Asian students, and Indo-Canadian students. I think that we can all agree that every student deserves a safe place to learn in the province of Ontario and to get to school. But since October the 7th, some children in this province have been impacted quite negatively. And that's the Jewish students, both in Ottawa, Toronto, and elsewhere across the province. Jewish day schools have been shot up, and children in our classrooms in different parts of the province have dealt with racism. These Jewish students, um, our benefits of beneficiaries, of course, have increased a Holocaust remembrance uh, education, but we need to do more. And I want to talk a little bit about Deshani Srivas, who had to take to the Ottawa Citizen this week to talk about her five-year-old child who was on a school bus and said this, Daddy, someone on my bus told every Jewish person to raise their hand. But I knew not to, Daddy, because he seemed mean. Can you imagine that that's happening in Ontario today? Every member here has said on occasion, at least once a year, that never again is now. Never again is now. Never again is now. And now is the time for all of us to stand up for zero tolerance of bullying of Jewish students in the province of Ontario. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning. Introduction of business.